A radio is a world that has to be believed to be seen. Hmm? Right. I got it. Thanks. Vegas All Net Radio. This program is intended for mature audiences only and contains strong or potentially offensive language of an adult and sexual nature. So, listener discretion advised. The views and opinions expressed on the curvaceous bounty of Sin City do not reflect those of this station or its affiliates. All music, stories, and characters are the sole property of their creators and are protected under international copyright law. Sierra, Sweet Cheeks, Toxie, and Glyph are personalities put on for your entertainment. Their stories are real, their language is explicit, and their behavior is out-fucking-rageous. If you can't take the heat, get the fuck out of the kitchen. Blasting to you straight out of Las Vegas, Nevada, it is the curvaceous bounty of Sin City, starring Sierra, Sweet Cheek, Glitz, and Toxic. Good evening, Las Vegas. And people around the world. And all you motherfuckers in Radiator Springs. Radiator Springs. And if that's... you don't know where that's from, you don't have any chillin'. That's right. Because that, that's from Cars, you guys. They, they live in Radiator Springs. They sure and do. The, and the tow truck is named Tow Mater. Tow Mater, you get it? It's like Mater. the vegetable. Mater. 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 That's a cute movie. How yeah. We start you know why? Because you are still in, like, birthday party kid zone? I am still in birthday party kid zone. My kid turns, well, his birthday's on Monday, but we had his party on Saturday. And I gotta tell you this, she won't tell you this, but she made a fabulous red cake that looked like a giant Lego. It was terrible. It was great. It tasted delicious. It looked oh, like crap. It was a great, you know, I'm gonna tell you, at the event I was at today, they had cupcakes from a real fancy dancy bakery. Mm-hmm. They were dry. Dry! They, I, I'm thinking... Where is Sierra's cake I was eating yesterday? Because that cake was yummy. One of the problems with um, whoever the fancy cupcake place is that you're talking about is that they batch their cupcakes. So they will make a giant batch over the weekend before they open up on Monday and freeze them. The and actual cake. The cake. Made. Okay. And they put the frosting on that. They defrost and cup and and frost they defrost the cake and then put the frosting I mean, on they it. They looked fabulous. They had oh, I'm sure. Pink swirl. And the icing beautiful. was probably great. But and, the cake um, itself was dry. It was just dry. And I, I mean, I, I do got to say. And you know what? I went to a birthday party after yours, too. Mm-hmm. And it was the same flavor cake you had. Again, your cakes are always so moist. It's so funny because we were driving over there and I said to my grandson, I said, Oh, Miss Sierra, we got. She always makes a cool cake for for the boy's birthday, and she and, and my little guy goes, "Yeah, she does." And uh, so we couldn't wait to see the cake. Oh man, I'm gonna perfect that cake though because I am eventually going to make another one of those Lego cakes. It was cute, I, and it's going to look much better you know, than this we one knew, did. Everybody knew what. It, now, after it cut, I walked in the kitchen and I went. Yeah, now it looks a little like titties, but it didn't before it was cut. <laughs> and once you made it past the first four pips on the uh, oh the first God, four pips on the thing. Hot. Yeah. Golly, isn't she? What is sexy, this? Sexy, sexy. You're talking like that and you can hit it. I've been waiting. Oh, that's all I had to do was like uh, flirt you up a little? That's it. That's it. That's, 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 it. that's it. I'm excited. I'm going to change the subject because I have a gift for you, Sierra. Me? Yes. Why now, me? we'll talk about Toxie, that it was her birthday Friday, although she didn't tell anybody. She so, told us on Facebook. Well, well Facebook yeah, told us. Her. I also yelled at Mr. Toxie for not letting us know that he was doing something for her birthday. What? He wasn't. Well, but he should. That's the point. Right. Okay. So, you know, like, okay. So, I seen this, and I'm like, Sierra! Because I, you know, I know we've been talking about your mom's hillbilly wedding all the time, and, and I seen your mom this weekend, and yeah. Um, um, so I seen this, and I thought, this is something really good for Sierra's hillbilly wedding prep. Oh God, you know I have to make a veil too, right? Ah, you gotta make a wait. Uh, is it a camel veil? No, I'm oh. making I'm making a crown of flowers with a little bit of pufty on it. Oh no! No, look at oh. they're jammy pants. I'm totally wearing these. I know. You know what I thought? No. Like, wouldn't that be so comfortable to do all your cooking in? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. That's what I thought, and I thought it's such the good thing. But like, I seen it across the store, and I'm like, oh, I gotta buy these. Oh, 
yeah, I'm so so. My mom informed us of how many of the outlaws from Arizona oh, she was are going to be there. Down when I was at your house yesterday. She's got two brothers, two brothers and two sisters in Arizona, and they are all married or with someone and have kids except for two of them and the kids have kids so and so all my I, it's going to be so many people but she and was so, like naming all these people that she didn't know was coming and then all of a sudden they called and now they're, they're coming. all coming and we don't know when they'll be there and mom's like i'm not sure where they're all going to stay and i'm like well i can tell you that at the one tiny little hotel down there that is where i will oh, be a hotel yeah. Hotel, no tell? Motel, no tell? Well, Hotel, I don't know what it is, but <laughs> that's where Callie Guy and I will be. Are you going to be on that mic over there? Yeah, on this mic. Okay. So, yeah, Callie Guy and the boy and I are going to get a hotel room for Friday night. And mom's like, ooh, say Saturday night. And I'm like, mm, not so much. Maybe I'm staying not. Saturday night. Maybe not. Yeah. So we're we're going to get a hotel room cuz quite honestly sleeping on a futon mattress on the floor in a house full of smokers oh. is going to drive me batshit. Oh. Well, and little guy can't because of his asthma, right? Yeah. He shouldn't be. Right. So right. Yeah, so we'll probably get a hotel room and stay there and We'll drive to the house to do all the prep work and then bring it all to, well, I thought, to like, the I could just MCA. see you up early in the morning to start your potato salad and stuff. And I'm like, oh, let me well, just get her these. I things. am off Friday because oh, okay. it's Nevada Day and I work for the world's best company ever because all of our kids are going to be off that That's Friday. Right. For Halloween, they're off. Instead of, instead of giving us Columbus Day off this year, they asked us if we would rather have Nevada Day off and we all said yes. Which Nevada Day is usually around ho- is Halloween. Right. So usually. I'm actually going to make my potato salad on friday because i've got to make a giant like I, i've got to like 20 pounds right. of potatoes like yeah well i've got to feed like 30 to 40 people potato salad that, that's you know you figure on a pound of potato yeah. salad per person who the hell eats a pound of potatoes you eat a pound of potato salad i eat a pound of potato salad i know you eat a pound of potato salad i do just because you eat it in four servings does not mean it doesn't add up to four pa- to a full pound <laughs> Do you know a pound has to be like you know those much. tiny little tubs okay, so that you buy? That's you a pound. Up, you get this much, and the second time you go up, you get the same amount. That's a pound. There's not. It, it, it doesn't happen for me that way. But <laughs> it's not just a meal of potato salad. Like maybe if that was the only piece of the meal, what else? Are you I'm having? like well, I'm I'm only I'm always. I would rather have too much than, than not enough because I hate people. I know, but a pound a person. But, and, but did you ever go into an event? And you look and you're like, yeah, you you're know what? To eat. Yes, you're you know what to never eat. runs out? Let me tell you what never runs out the fucking potato, potato salad, salad because not everyone eats it. You want to know whose potato salad always runs out before anyone else's dish? Mine. She does make good potato salad. <laughs> but no, really, I, you know what? I'm like you. I, I would rather make way too much food than for. Because I've been in a bit, you walk in and you go. Yeah, maybe I should eat. Yeah, I always God, feel bad so about I always feel about eating as much as I want to eat because other people need <laughs> to eat too. Right, right, and right. No, yeah. I'm like you. I would definitely overcook any of that if I if I had to. So. Yeah, so so I'm gonna be making potato salad on Friday before we come to Halloween. And um so my son's friend whose mom and boyfriend yeah, were at the party, yeah. they're gonna come to Halloween oh, too. Good. So I'm gonna good. send them all the details. Fun, fun, it's going to be a huge group this year. It's going to be so much fun. We always have such a good yeah. time. I gotta it's get... going to be a Friday, so we're expecting the kids to trick or treat a little bit longer. Yeah. And of course, uh, you have, have you come up with your trick or treat yet? Because you are the charge of the tricksters. Um, I'm thinking we're going to have like three buckets or three pails of some kind. I mean, we can go get dollar store buckets. Yeah, exactly. And they've got to throw a beanbag into the furthest bucket to get the big one. And uh, if they land in either of the other two, they, they will get yeah, a prize. A prize. The, jumbo the jumbo candy, right. This is a cool house. we got to do tricks for our treat. Well, a little bit sadder note. Just want to say that uh, Toxie and I just got back from the memorial service held for Amy Cooper or Summer in the South, as many of you know her. Um, hats off to Desiree and Jack. How was it? It was beautiful. Mm-hmm. It was very, you, you very, very, very nice. Um, when we first got there, Jack did a really beautiful display with the music and the pictures, and it was really nice. Yeah, there was a TV with um, photographs. Yeah, uh, constantly changing. Changing through, and a lot of people, a lot of familiar faces, a lot, a lot of people of traveled people. here from out of state. Any family haters show up? No, no mm-hmm. family haters. 
nice um, um, potluck. Hmm. I mean, everybody brought up. It, it just turned out really very nice. And then um, Jack got up and he had wrote a little eulogy. And Desiree said a bit and uh, Donald, Donald said a bit. And it, it got emotional, but it was a very nice, I thought, very, very nice afternoon and a good remembrance of her. You know, there were tears, there were laughs, there was everything, but it was very nice. Yeah, I have a limit of one funeral service per week, and I have one to go to on Wednesday, so. Yeah, yeah that's a lot. That's a lot to, yeah. to, under, to, to take on. But, you you know, it, it, was, it was a good amount of people, and you knew that everybody in there were there for all the right reasons. So there was no family haters. Good. There. Because I know that her family's been a little out yeah, of line. Yeah, a little, little, little much. You could feel that it was uh, definitely a room full of people who loved her. Uh -huh. I mean, there was a a little boy there um, related to um, her friends, and that poor little boy, I just wanted to hug him throughout the whole time because he even sobbing. he's sitting there with you know with tissues, just crying. Well, that was a little. Um, I know, I know, but. Um, you know, it just everyone there, you could just tell it was a room full of love. It was, so. it was. It, so it was, it was very nice. And, you know, you know, services and, and memorials are not for the dead. They're for the living. And, and I think that many people in that room needed a closure. They needed something to say goodbye mm -hmm. um, because her body was gone and the family was doing nothing here. So I think it gave a lot of people that, okay, this is our official goodbye and now, you know, we can mourn in our own way. So um, I think it's always like things are kind of hanging out there when somebody passes away until something is done to close that little thing up, like when, when Silent Mike passed away. And I think this was the same thing it kind of let people all come together and um so now people can kind of move on and, and she's uh you know in their hearts it was very weird because um as we left mr toxy was there and he's like i only knew a few people and i'm like i knew almost everyone there yeah, me too me too <laughs> almost so. everyone there and even if i didn't know them personally i knew of, like right, who, who they, they were. were yeah exactly so you know no, like a, nice. just a, a tiny just a couple people but otherwise yeah I... so and good things, we got Becky Butter Butterfly coming in at nine. We never get to catch her in here. She's one of the people that did come in from out of town. And she's in a lot, and she shoots with us a lot. But she's never here on Sunday night, so we'll, we'll catch her. Yeah, she's going to come in quick. Yeah, we were going to, uh, today's show is going to be the Breast Cancer Awareness Special. Right. Um, we had some unfortunate last-minute changes in programming. But we do have, hopefully, she hasn't gotten back to me, but hopefully one person calling in at 8.30 to talk to us about their experience with breast cancer. Yeah, and we we have another who was scheduled to be on tonight, which um, I, I think she's fabulous. I've, you know, looked up some of her stuff. She's a breast cancer survivor. Um, you know, she has, has a business. She uh, participated in um, a really great project to, to promote awareness. Um, but unfortunately, she had some changes tonight. So I, I have her rescheduled for right now, November 2nd. Okay. So we'll still okay, get to talk good. to her. Um, I had reached out to a few uh, professionals to see if we could get somebody to come in and, and discuss um, breast cancer, <laughs> breast and, to cancer examine our boobs. and to examine us. And um, I, I really think one took a, a little offense, like, you want to what, for medical reasons? And I'm like, yeah, of course, for yeah. medical reasons. And spread the word. So. <laughs> Are we supposed to spread the word? Breast we are supposed aware? to spread the word. Sorry, but apparently when you, when you mix it with... Uh, Oh, our raunchy sex. content. Becomes... They they think it might uh, border on other areas. Of... I'm almost positive we could have gotten Cali guy to come in and give us all free breast exams. <laughs> <Yeah. I'm> actually... <laughs> here's here's the deal. We do have um, a friend of the show, Lenny, who was in here once, uh, not that long ago, when he had come in with the uh, Mahals um, of the Mahal Empire, the the film um, the filmmakers. And so we're going to do in November, we're going to do a real push to uh, to get Lenny laid in 30 days. We're going to be blogging about it. We're going to uh, keep now, people updated. Now, I have updated. to tell you, I'm talking mm -hmm. on the phone with Toxie about mm -hmm. her idea for getting Lenny laid. Mm -hmm. And I said, so what happens in 30 days if Lenny don't get laid? We all pitch in no, for a hooker. No, said, no, no, I said, <laughs> one of us has to take care of it. And she said, <laughs> you know who it's going to be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll be sweet cheeks. <laughs> I'm that. I take it for the team, girl. Take it for the team. Take it for the take team. For the team. You're a real team but player. I'm a team we, player. I had actually tried to get him in here tonight because I thought it would be great if he tried to guess our breast sizes. Oh, that would be fun. 
And so, um, and just, you know, again, to help promote awareness, but he is working at night for this entire month. That's why we have to wait to start until November. And I tried to, um, I, I asked another friend of the show if he could come in tonight, but he already had plans. So well, this whole get Letty laid, I think it's going to be a riot. If any of you are fans of the show and you've listened and you watch, you know, that when he was in here with the Mahal, but how, wait, he's only been laid once and it was somebody they actually paid or something. I, I think it's been more than once, but if I recall, what he said is he hasn't been in two years now. Okay. Um, but he's, you know, everybody has. Or every movie, when you watch, like, buddy movies, everybody has that one buddy friend who's, like, you know, goofy and fun but never gets laid. And I, I don't know if that's the role that he kind of fell into because the people he's friends with are, like, you know, really uh, uh, out there and known in the community. Right. And, and they have like lots of, you know, yeah. they have, you know, lots of entourage around them. Um, but I actually think that he probably has a little more game than he realizes. So I think what we'll do is we'll – help him bring it out yeah, and i think we, we need to help you know, him, give him give him hints on you know dress maybe he needs a little haircut you know or maybe i don't know tone down a little bit the way he speaks sometimes we really need we're, we're I, gonna work i on. like I, mean, I, I you know like what i'll tell you goofy I, guy. yeah and i could see that he's there's a nice looking man behind everything his really big clothes and his hat he had on and i think that that like you know maybe he's a diamond in the rough girl we need to take him to DXL and get him a nice shirt and some DXL. pants. It's a uh, casual um, mail DXL, yeah. It's a uh, CXL. No, it's no. DXL. Is it? Yeah. I, isn't that the shipping for? company? No, <laughs> like, that's, we're not shipping them That's anywhere. DHL. Want them here. Oh, I, yeah, I thought it was CXL. No. What I don't does the D so. stand for in DXL? Fuck if I know. <laughs> yeah, see? Destination XL, oh, Casual Mail DXL. Dex okay, got gotcha. All the best men's brands, waist sizes 38 and up. Oh, you know who else was great to see? We see Jezebel Jolie was there. Remember, she had that oh, bad accident. How is she doing? She's you know, doing really that's good. That's funny because I, I even talked to her briefly sitting there, but I forgot for a moment that she yeah, that was, was in a, that. That's the first time I've seen her since she had the scooter because accident. Because I had seen the, the, the pictures. Wow, I would have stared a little more then. Had well, I she real said thought. that she's <laughs> feeling pretty good, except that this arm, which she broke in several places, mm -hmm. is just not quite working right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, but she says, other than that, she, she says she's had a real, you know, she says I'm laying on the ground and, and other than the porn business that, that Jezebel does, she also works part-time at Walmart and that's where she was going on her way to work when she got hit on her scooter. And she says, I'm laying on the ground, bones broken all over me waiting for the paramedics. And all I could think about, I freaking got hit going to damn ass Walmart. Mm -hmm. And she's like, you know what? Life's too short. I don't want to work at Walmart no more. No more. So, you know, I mean, I guess when something happens, you know, I already know when you hit your 50s, you start evaluating your longevity and your life. And, and, and my girl, Jezebel, is in her 40s. No lie about that. And then you have an accident like that. You think, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. Like, why am I beating my ass up to die in a few yeah. years or whatever? Yeah. Well, it makes you, I mean, when, when you're sitting in there and all I kept thinking about as well in the memorial, um, as we all know, Summer was very young. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you, you know, very young, very vivacious, and so it just makes you sit and think, like, gosh, why, why do you do things that <laughs> that you don't want to do, or, or you know, not, or, not or that you, know, you have to, but like why aren't you like stressed? living the way that that you want to live? Right. And, and I, I think about the things I stress about sometimes, and then I think about like her passing mm -hmm. and such, a, and I go. It like puts it in check for me and go, I just cannot waste that kind of energy on some things that I waste energy I had, on. When I, I on agree. The, That's why I don't own. waste energy on people that either have no loyalty or love for me. No, yeah. there, there's no point in it. I'm sorry. I have more, yeah. more important things to do. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, and like the older I get or the, you know, when you see close friends that this kind of stuff happens to, like Jezebel or, or Summer, it, I just, it just really kind of puts a, a, it all into perspective for you. Yeah. yeah, my uh, my crazy sister's flying in tonight. I want to meet her. Hey, on an airplane. She's gonna. Yeah. Out of the like. Out of the can't van. Can't she just push from the, the van river? Here? <laughs> but I. We'll but, talk about the van down by the river. Me, though is she's gonna be here a long time. This wedding is not for another couple of weeks. Right. She's gonna be here for a little over two weeks. Is she staying with you? Oh, good God, no. <laughs> <laughs> say that in turn. Are you saying? No, no, no. Did you read, I actually did you read her a, um, it, a, it's a so, van. It's so bad between us that I don't want her alone with my child. I actually don't want her really? without. Me 
with my child. Really? Yeah. Girl, girl you got yeah, to unless she... so like we can, I got to meet this. I've heard about her for so many years. Oh, I'll have like some big dinner or something. Yeah. I'll invite everybody over yeah. we'll or something. We'll yeah. We'll yeah. 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 We'll do I that. I'd love to meet her. She's so crazy. So they're living uh, no longer in a van down by the river because they got a sweet deal where they get to live in somebody else's house for free. Now, is she married? She is. And, and her husband, coming? no, he's not because they they can't both afford to be off work for two weeks. Or can he leave? No. Yeah. Uh, can and, he leave the state? What are you well, going to say? <laughs> he can leave the state. No, my sister's husband <laughs> is a fucking sorry, saint. It's my sister. It's my sister. I apologize. I'm mixing my, up siblings. <laughs> my sister's husband is a fucking saint and deserves to be canonized as such because he puts up with her. And he's such a nice person and a really good person. And I don't know how he puts up with her. So the current deal is that my sister, the reason she needed my mom to send her money is because she couldn't work because she was um, in the hospital for so long because she had some problem and she's lost so much weight. Although my other sister and I are taking bets on how much that actually is. Oh, for when she gets here. Well, my sister's picking her up. It's at like 10, 15 that she's picking her up. So it won't be during the show when I find out, but I'll give you guys all an update so next week. She's coming in. Yeah, she's coming in tonight. My mom spring that on me. Oh, yeah, she's going to be here for two weeks. And I'm like, she's not staying here. And she goes, oh, no, she's staying at my house. I said, oh, no, I wasn't asking that as a question. I was telling you she's not staying here. <laughs> you know, because my sister's currently throwing around a lot of very vicious lies about me, lies that could put me in jail if she decided to. No. Oh, yeah. And my biggest worry about her, because she is one of these people who must manufacture drama. If there is peace between people, there must no longer be that peace. I did not have any problems with her. For the last two years that we haven't heard from her, I have tried calling her on her birthday. I have sent her Christmas cards. I have left her voicemails. I've sent her emails. I've tried very hard to contact her, to be in contact with her, to keep her in contact with her nephew. But she's not responded. And now she's telling everybody why she's not responded. And I told my sister tonight, because uh, she told me, you know, that, that she she knew what my sister was saying that my sister had admitted to her what she was telling everyone and i said well i'm gonna be really real with you and mom right now and you can go tell mom this if neither one of you during the entire two weeks she's here calls her out on her bullshit i never want to speak to either one of you again because if anyone and this may sound petty and selfish and low if anyone deserves your loyalty it's me and, not her and i agree because i've been around the last few years and i know what it's been what you go through with your family and and i'm and i'm sorry like i get that she's your sister or your daughter and that you haven't spoken to her and you really want to rekindle coming home, you right? really want to rekindle a relationship with her but i do not because she's She's not just telling everybody that I'm an asshole or I'm mean to her or whatever. She's telling things that are ruinous to a person's life. And if she comes down here and decides to start telling uh, persons of authority these things, it could cause lots and lots of problems for me. And that's just, I don't even want her to know where my son goes to school. I don't want her to know anything really like for the two weeks that she's down here if she comes to the house to visit there's going to be a lot of people there it's right. not just going to be me and her or me her and my mom or me her and my sister it will be a everybody group. i fucking know i will call people i haven't talked to in years <laughs> going to meet the sisters, and be like i'm having dinner you bitches better be there this is all you have to do if your sister's coming to your house i will bring my sister they will go fight to their death in the parking lot <laughs> Because no, your backyard's pretty right? open. We could we could hold a, a, yeah, a good wrestling match. No, and the the, backyard, right? the grass totally needs a bloodbath. It's go. dying back right now. Yeah, I, it so needs right. some nutrients. Listen, my sister does anything for a pack of smokes and a Dr Pepper. Okay. <laughs> I will buy a pack of smokes and a Dr Motherfucking Pepper if that's what it takes. No, it's just I I can't fathom why she's doing these things spreading these vicious lies and rumors and telling people the things that she's telling them and it hurts me to the core especially since i was there for her when she went my parents paid for college for her twice the first time she snorted it and the second time she actually went and she got a degree and is she working in that field now no as a matter of fact she said that it was a waste of her time to be going she does not want to work in her field anymore and i'm like you have a degree that could get you $60,000 a year and instead you would rather work for minimum wage at some stupid co-op fucking hippie restaurant place. You know what? 
I have no respect for that. I'm sorry, I don't. Especially since I sacrificed so much to make sure she went to school every day, got home every day, that she was fed every day, that I paid for her cigarettes. I gave her use of my car whenever she wanted to do it. She never had to put gas in it, never had to do anything. And all she can tell anyone about it is that I never got up at 2 o'clock in the morning to feed my kid. And I'm like, you know what, motherfucker? I actually have proof that I did. Uh, one of, like one of he's our, alive. Um, yeah. So one of, one of our listeners, she uh, she had shared with me on uh, Facebook. First, she confirmed Destination XL Group is the largest retailer of men's big and tall apparel with operations throughout the United States, Canada, and in London and England. Thank you. So I definitely didn't know that. I'll have to check that out. She also said, I'll go and help with the sister. Sounds so horrible. She's... <laughs> Once upon a time, she and I were really close, but I mean, I, I let her live with me. I, I made sure she made it to school every day. I made sure that when she was sick, that she was taken care of. Like I, right. I, I've done so much for her and then to have her run around and tell people these vicious, well, it's just not right. Blasphemous. Lot, yeah. Slanderous why would things. She want to put her own sister in a, in a position that because she be has gone. nothing else to complain about and because yeah. she has nothing to complain well, about like with me some kind of jealousy maybe like oh absolutely she can't mama, have kids and mama lets you you know you rent mama's house and you you know you're right no you have kids all of it has nothing to do with that it is 100 percent because she cannot have kids oh. she wanted me to move up there so that she could help take care of my kid and i'm like nah maybe but i'm not really certain like i would love to live up there but my reservation has always been her because I know her. She's always been a fat. She's always been a liar. That's that's the sad truth about it. Is my sister will fabricate stuff because she doesn't get the attention she thinks she needs. She she's not the baby. She's the middle child. She's right? the middle child, and she absolutely suffers from middle child, child syndrome. syndrome? Oh, absolutely. Mine is middle as well. My sister's middle, but my sister's one of the. My sister's the total opposite. She's the one that was like, you know, when I didn't feel like doing something, she'd jump up before. Like if it was my turn to like set the table, she'd jump up before me. Mom, can I set the table for you? You know, she was like the goody two shoes. She still is. She was a mile away from my mother. Anytime she's going to the store, Mom, I'm going to Target. Do you need anything? Well, that's. Mom. There's two versions of middle child syndrome. There's the middle child who tells everybody that their family hates them and moves far away from them and and distance them distance them themselves and does everything they can, can to draw no i can't to draw <laughs> the attention towards them everything that they can including make up outright lies um and she's that kind of middle sister and then there's the other version of middle child syndrome where they try to be better than every other sibling they have and they will go out of their way to make sure that Again, it's the same thing, but just with a different right. spin on it. Yep. They they are They're trying to find their place amongst the middle. Yeah, and is. yeah, I've just never been, you know, whatever. Well, she forgets that I was the one who walked her to and from school and helped her with her homework and, you know, cooked all her meals for her and made sure she had lunches and all that other stuff. And and I'm, you know, I'm sad that it's come to that point, but it's at the point where if she if she doesn't repent for her sins literally <laughs> um i really i want nothing to do with her physically saw her she was she's met she's met cali guy so it's been within oh, the last okay. four years okay i'm gonna say it was three years ago she and my dad were both down here for something i can't remember what it was but yeah they were both okay. down here about, about three, three years, years ago, ago. yeah. How did you guys get along then? Not... Fine. There oh, were no okay. problems. So this is all just recently. This is years. all just when. So here's what happened. Two years ago at Christmas time, uh, the internet got shut off because we were having a billing problem. I remember? Because they were saying we owed them this much money. We proved that we didn't. Did you not pay the bill? No, we were paying no, the bill every they month. They paid. Prove they paid it. Yeah. It was it was automatic withdrawal at your mom's account, wasn't it, or something like that? Yeah, it was automatic withdrawal. It was getting paid, but it wasn't getting oh, recorded. I thought you meant here. No, oh no, no, at home. At home. Uh -huh. And we have a tradition where we would Skype everybody in so that they could all watch my son open his Christmas presents from them oh, and whatnot. Nice. So we, we, you know, called her and said, look, there's no internet at the house right now, but we're going to take video and I'm going to create a YouTube page and post it up and everybody can see it. And she got pissed off because we didn't have internet at the house and said, um, how dare you people do this to me? I never want to speak to you again. And we didn't hear from her for almost two years because we didn't have internet at the house. 
That's the only reason. How do you get that lucky? I, I'm trying to hope your sister says I'll never. Do you speak with your yeah, sister? Yeah, all the time. Really? All the time. She leaves <laughs> me like five minute long voicemails like five times so a like, day. Okay, so like I know like your sister's not like you, but are you guys close at all? Um, There has to be if you talk to her all the time. You know, no, that's not older true. Or younger, first of all. Younger. I'm okay. the oldest. Okay. And we're all so, older children. Yeah, oldest we're children. all the oldest. And so um, I'm very, you know, you know, it's a little different. I'm very, 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 very close with my younger brother. Um, who you all hear me talk about, and I send, you know, an appropriate drunk text to that. That's my brother. <laughs> um, my sister and I have never been close. We used to fight a lot growing up. Um, the first, like, physical fight I was ever in was her. Um, but just to, like, share with how our relationship is, I once tried to get her on Jenny Jones on an episode <laughs> titled My Sister's a Slut. <laughs> so... <laughs> It, you know, it, it never really. My sister uh, tried to do that for me. <laughs> but I mean, you know, we're fine. We're we're we get along now. I mean, she has like two thousand kids now, so they love to call me up and wish um, they were yours. <laughs> <laughs> they, you, they got a pretty sweet deal. Yeah, Toxie, can we done. come live with you? Yeah, they they call. It's so funny. I just told her the other day they called to wish me a happy birthday, but they had to. Do, there's really five of them, but they had to do it in sections. So first the two. She has two sets of twins. Oh my god! Two sets of boy-girl twins, which is just—it's so amazing. rare. Anyway, yeah. but two sets—it's just insane. Fertile Myrtle, huh? Right. Yeah. And it, by the last ones, I told them like you shouldn't even have to pay the doctors because those babies are just gonna walk out your vagina, like, <laughs> just walking right out. But um, so the babies called me earlier, and then the the older ones call me when they got off school, and so. Whenever I call her, all of the kids want to talk. And I just finally told her yesterday, I'm like, have you seen the Hunger Games? You know that opening <laughs> scene where they're, you know, they have to go grab those tools for survival in the middle with that, the mm -hmm. shell. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, then, and then they're all in the circle and they got their game faces on. And once it's time to go, they run. And the next thing you know, they're like murdering each other and screaming and yelling and grabbing stuff and running. That's what I envision it like every time I call. <laughs> like those kids, <laughs> except the prize is the phone <laughs> versus, you know, the, the bow and arrows. Um, and that's what it sounds like. That's so, awesome. That's yeah. funny. You know, I wish, uh, I wish I had a relationship like that with my sister. Uh, I, I, I wish she was, she could be all the crazy she wants as long as she's not being vicious and slanderous right. and directing she, it towards me. Well, she's, I mean, mine is crazy and we've definitely had a few times that if I wrote books about like you would sit there and, and your jaw would drop, people would never believe that, um, that these things happened. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, for the most part, I think we, you know, we get along until we don't and then we can go long periods of time without talking and normally it's the kids who will uh oh, and, give and, a call and she's not in the same state she's not no here. she is she, she is she, yeah she, so lives so she lives close enough to come clean your house and steal your stuff yes. right when does she see <laughs> do you see her and the kids or just mostly talk to them yeah no i i mean i see them i i can't <laughs> i um i can't stay at her house for very long because the kids are a little cray cray <laughs> and, I, and she's most likely listening. So now I'm probably going to get shanked in my sleep. <laughs> um, but you know, the kids are, they're adorable, but when you, and they're oh, well, great, five of them together they're great individually, but yeah, when five, five are together, together yeah, no matter is, what five you get, you know, yeah. and I just have one and I, I have one that, but wait a minute. I think Mr. Toxie made a, he's, he's, he's had a revelation and, and okay. he told me that today. Did you hear what we talked about? No. You know, um, our friend had their little girl there. Uh -huh. And usually Mr. Toxie's like, oh, babies, let's have a baby. I said, oh, keep this baby away from Mr. Toxie because he gets baby fever. And he goes, nope. He says, we couldn't be going out all this like we go out if we had another baby. That's it. So he had a revelation. <laughs> You're off the hook, girl. I've, I've been off the hook. I <laughs> shut that factory down a long time ago. <laughs> I said, you know, I'm done. He just I'm said done. that today. One, and one I'm and like, done, whoa, I'm yeah. he must be enjoying himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, my, my goal is like later in life because, well, we disagree. I, we've talked about this before where I want to um, adopt. Um, foster children like I want to become a foster parent with the option to adopt the children right and he absolutely 100% is against it so in my second life <laughs> I will be like you know you know that the old woman with all the cats I'll be the old woman with all the well, kids but I have a question in your second life mm -hmm. um, 
is Mr. Toxie going to be there? Well, he doesn't want the kids, so I mean, he might just have to come visit us from next door. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he'll be with the crazy neighbor lady. <laughs> no, maybe? No. Uh, no, 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 no. That's no. the old house. Oh, no. Okay, that's right. No, I forgot. Everybody's got a crazy one. Oh, with all the cats. Yeah. yeah no. No, 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 send no. him over there. He can live with the cat shit. No. <laughs> I mean, babies? Babies? Mm -mm. I don't know. You know, but you think now, like I said, yours is old enough. Pretty soon she's going to be, like, able to stay on her own. And um, if you go into the foster parent thing, you're back into the little kid situation. I know, but I'll be older. I'm enjoying life now, but eventually I'll start to look my age. and uh... Like like when you get 50 or so? <laughs> <laughs> eventually, you know, it'll catch up with me, and then I might not want to go out as much. When I was younger. No, no, I then you and I can join the Red Hat Society and we can go I out. I was in the Red Hat Society. Were you a pink hat? When no I way. First, when I first moved here, I had a friend. I made friends with this woman. And this is actually how I became part of the group. Okay. The whole BBW group. And this woman loved to do everything. Every group she could participate in, every mommy and me class, every everything. So you were a pink I hat. I tag along. And one day she's like, we're going to join this group and you wear pink hats. And I'm like, that's kind of cool. And I get there, and we're the youngest people there. Wait a minute. What is the difference between the pink hat and the red hat? Because pink hat. 50. Yeah. Oh. You have to be 50 oh, to wear a red hat. I have to wear a red hat. Yeah. Yes. It didn't last long. And trust me, you can't sneak into a pink hat. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't <laughs> last If I wear a pink hat long. the first time, they may not know. Mm. I don't have to tell the truth. I walk in like this. <laughs> like this, the, she's, she's gonna tape her eyes back. I walk in like this with my pink. I'll tape this in my pink hat. <laughs> in your pink hat. Well, the very first time I went, I wore pink Mickey Mouse ears, and I'm like, "This isn't the kind of hat you want." <laughs> so no, they bought me a hat. That's funny. <laughs> because I wanted to wear the pink Mickey ears. Oh. So what happens at these secret hat meetings? They oh, complain. No, <laughs> they bitch about stuff. What do they bitch about? Oh, it depends on the group have that you're in. I, I have I've been to a couple of like maybe we'll try this out because uh, when my mom first got divorced and then split from the meth head, she had no friends because she only had th friends through my dad. She didn't really hang out with a lot of people at work, and you know the meth head was gone, and so all of the meth head friends were gone too. And I was like, well, you know, we could go join this group together because you're old enough to be a red hat, and I can be a pink hat, and we can go do all these things together. And uh, Kelly's guy's mom used to do this and okay. stories about them going to brothels and getting drunk and, oh, how fun. and you know, going on, you know, road trips to this and go do that and have potlucks and, you know, play Euchre and, you know, all that other crap. Do you know Euchre? Um, I haven't played it in a lot of years. A I lot, a lot of years. from Back East played Euchre. I'm from Back East. Oh, yes, you are. We Where? need to have a Euchre night. Hmm? Where do we discuss this? Euchre? No, where are you from? Pennsylvania, right? No, 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 no. Um, um, originally, my family's from Iowa, but we lived mostly Oklahoma, Texas, Arkansas. I just that's got Midwest. No, that's that is not East Coast. That is east of the Rocky Mountains. That no, is east. No, I even say being from. No, it's I'm not. I'm with you. I'm from no, East too, not. and I'm from Michigan. I know they People, call it the Midwest, but I, Michigan I, is more east than Midwest. When I'm from Pennsylvania, when I say east, people are like, "That is not the East Coast." Because it's not the coast. Fuck those no, people. I did not say east coast. Well, I said it's, back it's east. east. Back this east. Is the no. How it's can the you call Michigan when right across the little doo whopper is New York, which is then it becomes east. No, it's <laughs> further east than it is mid. No. Michigan is getting get I'm going to tell you, all West Coasters believe anyone from east of the Rocky Mountains is from I'm the with east. You. I'm with you, sister. Now, technically, I could tell everybody I was raised in the South. Texas, Oklahoma, and Arkansas are technically part of the Southern really states. Quick, how, how much younger was your sister? What's your year difference? Five years, and then my next sister is seven years. Wow, there was a lot of... Space. My mom had a miscarriage between us. Oh, but you just got me so excited about Euchre. I, we, I mean, in Michigan, there's euchre parties Clubs, every yeah. Friday night, and me and me and Bugman used to play euchre all the time. We need to have euchre night. I'd like to get a bridge game together. Oh, I've never played bridge, but euchre, I'm on some euchre. Bridges, now. bridges, like bridge games can go on for months at a time. Really? Yeah. You can exchange wrinkle cream. At your bridge game. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we should totally and wear your red, hat, your pink hat. <laughs> no, pink hat. but we should all bring our ipsy bags and do ipsy bag exchanges. Oh, no, that would be fun. I'm wearing an ipsy polish. I did not awesome. get any ipsy polish yet. I didn't this get ipsy is... polish either. Yeah. 
Did you get that on your bag this but month? I wouldn't but see, bag from the but see you know what? I'll mm -hmm. never get Ipsy polished because when they ask the little questionnaire, I never use them because I always get my nails done at the salon. I don't have any polish. I no take files. mine to the salon. I need to repaint like I just mine. I got a pedicure, oh, manicure, okay. and I take my own polish. Not me. I um, I use theirs. I pay a lot of money for my nails and, and my toes. But then when it chips, are screwed. But I don't mind because I get because I get gel nails. I'm too cheap. Um, well, I used to get, there, like, I used to go to Char to Mama and get them done. And for years and years and years, I've been getting acrylic nails. And I've always had a lifting problem, no matter who did. I'm talking within three days, my nails right. are lifting. So um, I was in a, it was during the bash, and my I needed to get my nails done. And Mama couldn't get me in, so I went and seen the place where I get my toes done, which is a different salon. And I said, somebody needs to do my nails. And they're like, and I, you know, new, new person, new guy. And I said, I, you know, they're lifting. They go, try the gel nails and i put them babies on and i mean three weeks and not one lifted mm -hmm. so it's a little bit more money but it's really worth it to me so um i don't know how we got talking about the nails but, oh the chips and the, the, Ipsy, polish. the Ips, yeah, polish we went from euchre to jail nails that's how we went yeah, much, Boy, better we're going much better now. did you watch friday night <laughs> utopia i have not watched it yet neither I of you have either. watched it no i've I'm been giving you a spoiler it's the wedding Oh, well, we knew it was going to be and, the wedding. And I'm going to give you one more spoiler. I already gave it to Toxie. Um, the minister's coming back to do the wedding. Oh, that's yeah. great. Yeah, that great. Yeah. So Aww. that's not too much of a spoiler. That's, that's a fabulous. Thing. But it's not on twice a week no more. I think they've... Uh, did you notice that it's not taping twice a week? I have not noticed that. Yeah, check. It's not. So I think maybe in the summer it was twice a week, and now they're just maybe hey, doing it. Catch this is direct off of Wikipedia, and if it's on Wikipedia, you know it is correct. <laughs> The Midwest. <laughs> the Midwest. She cannot give it up. She cannot leave it alone. I cannot. I cannot. The Midwest. Um, the Midwest United States. Wait, hold on. Whoever, who the fuck wrote this? They put a little... Oh, they don't like Indian what you're saying Michigan. because the Midwest no, no, no. does not include no, no. Michigan? The region consists of 12 states in the central and inland northeastern U.S. Wait, hold on. What state were we talking about? Tell Michigan. me again. Tell me again. Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Michigan. She was an Iowa one. Yeah. Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. Midwest. But, uh, uh. Well, Not that I like being right. But, I'm just but who the fuck is wrote that? <laughs> who cares? Right. I'm the one who lived back, lived east. I lived east too. There we go. We lived east of Las Vegas. Sisters. We grew up east of Vegas. When you say east, I expect to hear somewhere east. I almost lived in Hoboken, New Jersey. That is so east. That is east Coast, <laughs> oh, Cape Cross. Yeah. Territory. East, east. That's yeah. it. Yeah. I That's almost, east. yeah, when my, uh, my dad, when we lived in Oklahoma, my dad lost a job and he immediately, he got laid off, but he immediately got two job offers. Um, one for a company that was based out of Hoboken, New Jersey, and one for Las Vegas, Nevada. And I remember us kind of having a family discussion about this, and my mom and I were both on board for Hoboken. Like, we wanted to move further east. We wanted to stay where there was no. where there was green and winter and summer and spring and fall. My mom grew up in Arizona. Right. And, and she was like, I do not want to go back to the desert. The desert is a terrible, horrible, awful place to live because there's nothing... There's no green green right. at all. And my dad overrode all of us and we moved to Las Vegas because he didn't want to shovel snow. No. And then it snowed the first winter we were here. <laughs> no. I mean, hold on. One of our listeners, she keeps, um, Fernie, you can, uh, just to share. You I love sign, her, by the way. Fernie is awesome. You, she can, you can sign into chat, too, and then that way I won't miss your messages. Yeah, so message that way you can chat with the other people in chat, but too, Fernie. But just to share, now I really love my girl. Oh, they are so not from back east. Shut boy, up, Bernie. You're supposed said, to help me. Boy, those girls. <laughs> Thank you, Bernie. You know what? We lived further east than we do now. And trust me, that Rocky Mountain divide is a fucking divide. It is a whole nother oh, yeah. culture over it is. here. It is. I was in complete culture shock when we moved here. Because when we moved here in, uh, in KOTB then known as New Kids on the Block, were still a big thing in Oklahoma. And so I had one New Kids on the Block shirt for every day of the week. And I moved over here and immediately got the shit beat out of me because I was You're still wearing New, New Kids, Kids on the, on the block. block. And and also, like, I moved here and they had this crazy thing that they call sixth grade centers where they were, for like two years, they tried to integrate the white people with the black people here. And it was the same year as the uh, riots. Wow. in Northtown 
and that's where my school was because they were busing me from way down in suburbia all the I way up into Nuff Town. That time. I didn't know none of that. In, uh, yeah, in 89 and 90. Yeah, I lived in Detroit in the 60s. Yeah. That was when the Detroit, the, the, the race, riots. race riots happened. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, no. I was like seven years old. So it, it was crazy. So I'm I'm with all these like super ghetto kids. Now I grew up in this in a ghetto in the South where, you know, you learn good skills like breaking and entering and hot wiring a car. <laughs> <laughs> I good learned. Skills. Right. And those were useful skills. But over here, I learned that unless you were having sex, you weren't cool. And I was like, I don't even like boys all that much but in sixth grade these girls were like this is my husband and this is my girlfriend and, and it, it was just a, such terrible culture shock we over had, here um, i was just talking sweet cheeks about this earlier but i had um you know my my child transitioned to a uh, middle school mm -hmm. and so i was talking to another parent and she's like is, is your daughter you know really into boys yet or you know or what so i i sat down with her one day and i asked her i'm like so you know What's going on? Are you are you into boys yet? How how is it going? She's like, no, mom. And I'm like, are you into girls? And she's like, <laughs> no, mom. <laughs> I have that same conversation with okay. my kid, and I'm like, so are there any special girls at school that you like? No. Oh, well, are that. there any special boys that you like? No, mom. I'm not gay. Like, well, let me tell okay. you this funny story. I really shouldn't tell this, but I'm gonna tell it because you have to tell, tell these today. stories. So my daughter now is, um, you know, little cheeks. Um, so she goes home yesterday and, and my grandson is blowing up a condom like a balloon. <laughs> and she goes, what are you doing? Where did you get that? I got it at grandma's house. <laughs> and she goes, he takes it away from her and she goes, he goes, it's my balloon, mom. <laughs> and then Mr. Toxie tries telling everyone. It wasn't even in a package. Yeah, he tried to tell me it wasn't in a package. It was. I it go, was. shut up. Well, you know what he does? You know, and I'm so bad because I've always just let him look at my drawers. You know what I mean? He like, he'll play with my jewelry and, and I'm sure he found a condom in my drawer and what's this and opened it. But here's another, here's a, this is another little witty one he did yesterday. So they were cleaning out um, Bug Guy's storage and moving stuff in my garage and just kind of doing a bunch of stuff. And Bug Guy had a... Um, a cooler, one of those round zipper kind of coolers, look like a can. Mm -hmm. And he had um, uh, there was actually pee in it, urine in it. And he was at the at the thing washing it out. And the little guy says, "What are you doing?" He goes, uh, "You, I'm washing this out." He says, "Well, I'll do it." And he says, "What was in it?" And he said, "Well, there was pee in it. Okay, it was a long road, whatever. I don't even know." But here's the fun part. So later on, he's folding up a canopy. They had like a beach canopy they take to the beach. Mm -hmm. and, and he goes, what, what's that? And, and Bug Guy says, that's a canopy. He said, no, I had the canopy earlier. <laughs> <laughs> he's seven years old. That's pretty witty. That's pretty good. <laughs> Kids are hilarious. So, yeah, he was blowing up a condom he got from Grandma's house. Oh, wait, you guys got to do one. Okay, I'm driving. We're driving to your house yesterday. Grandma, are you teaching my mom and, and her boyfriend how to be um, um, FBI agents? Okay. So you know my daughter's camming. So he finds their handcuffs. Okay. Oh. And he says to my daughter's boyfriend, well, what do you got these for? And he says, oh, we're FBI agents. So somehow he figures grandma's teaching them how to be FBI agents. See, this is why you need to get into being a militaristic prepper. Because my son sees handcuffs and he's like, oh, that's just something we picked up at the last gun show we were at. He never, ever <laughs> associates <laughs> that. Guy's gonna, he's going to trip because he's blowing up when he, re, you know, one day he's going to realize what a condom is and he's going to realize what the handcuffs are really for. And then he's going to realize who Sweet Cheeks is, and then he's going to realize that his grandmother and his parents aren't really FBI agents. And he's I, just going to go... I said that one And he will ne be... never trust you people again. <laughs> and at the same time, he's going to there's no Santa Claus, okay? Yeah, what? There's what? <laughs> Don't even throw that out there. Well, you know, my mom says the first year you stop believing in Santa Claus is the first, first year you stop That's our presents. role at the house. And so I call... I'm 52. Mom, I still believe it. You know what? I get a check every year. Yep. Yes. We do the way we do it at home. Oh no, my daughter like plays it up now because she's smart. She's smart oh, like that. I'm telling you, if we're home for Christmas, no presents get put under the tree. Now, come on, I'm 52 years old. My parents are 72 years old. Until we're all in bed, 
and then all the presents will go on the tree just like Santa Claus came. See, I don't, I, I don't know how to handle the whole Santa Claus thing with my kid because, like, he already doesn't believe in any of the magic fairies and dragons and Huna, but he still believes in the Tooth Fairy and Lego Men and and well, yeah, and Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny and all that stuff. And it's like, at some point, like, he's kind of getting into that rational thinking age now where he's going to start putting one and two See, and three together. See, they, oh, that's what I did. They did. You know, my daughter attends a religious school. And when she was in second grade, a comment was made. And then the teacher said something about, well, how many of you believe in Santa? And of course, you know, mine's like, and then looks around and realizes, and, and there's, you know, maybe two with their hands up. And she's like, I'll let your parents handle that. And um, she came home and told me, and she's like, is that what that means? And I said, exactly what you said. And it's what you choose to believe. Right. And as long as you believe, he'll always come. So she asked a few more times, you know, and, and I wasn't, I didn't want to lie. And I didn't right. say like, no, absolutely, it's true. And right. no, you know, it's not. Yeah, my well, it's what you choose to choose believe. To believe. My standard believe no comes. So my standard answer has always that. been that Santa is the spirit of giving, and yeah. and this is the time and, and season of that. And Santa comes to bring well, you presents. Same experience. My daughter didn't go. She went to a public school, but one of the when she was in second grade, one of the lunch mothers was you know a raging Bible fire thumper. and stone mm-hmm. Christian. And decided to tell all the children at her table that there was no Santa Claus at a public school. I I do not pay my taxes for you to put your you religious what? beliefs That's into my, my child's decision. head. That's my yeah. decision right. when to tell my child. Oh, I was livid. Yeah, I would be too. And um, you know, I would have I would have had her yanked. Oh, I did. I called the school, you know, yeah. and I said. You know what I you know I mean why would you take that away from my tooth my yeah. my seven my six year old. You know? Yeah, the, the hard part with, you know, I obviously have the religion in school, but I'm a mm-hmm. firm believer that it shouldn't be in a public school, right. um, but we chose to and, and pay for it to <laughs> be in school. So obviously it's there, right. but also it, it is kind of the, the same thing where, you know, different beliefs, like she came home one day, she was much, much younger. And she said, you know, we had a discussion at school and that only men and women should be able to marry, you know, absolutely that is it. And I'm like, well, yeah, yeah. Let me not really, you, <laughs> you know, and, and that yeah. was the first time. And she was very young at the time. It was the first time we really had to fully sit down and discuss like, here's, here's why they're telling you this. Here's what I choose to believe. You'll find in your own heart what to believe, but this is what, you know, this is what mommy and daddy See, agree. That's the what right I thing. believe. You open them up to, <laughs> different right. views right um and and my daughter definitely knows what i believe and then mm-hmm. they they have to make their own decisions and, and find their it. own place and, and their it. own peace it's really I'm, it's really hard for me because uh right now um i'm going through some really personal things with people in my religious faith and um so my kid is surrounded by these people that he hasn't been surrounded by in many many years and so the the thought the the discussions of religion and faith have been coming up more and more, and uh, so my kid laid out some like real Bible thumper shit shit to me not too long ago, and I turned to him and I said, "Where the fuck did you learn that?" He goes, "Well, it's just what I believe." And I said, "Well, I'm gonna tell you right now that th- what you just said is is wrong on so many levels." And when you are older, we will discuss more about these religious beliefs and things. I said, but please don't start making assumptions about things because of what adults tell you or what he overhears or what he overhears yeah, or really anything else like that. Look at everything and make I said, really, sense. you're, you're, I, and I've told him from the very get go, cause he used to ask me what a soul is and stuff. And I said, really, your job is not to worry about the fate of your immortal soul. That's my job right now because I'm your parent. You right. really don't have the rational thought or thinking to make decisions that could jeopardize your <laughs> Your soul. Your soul. Right. Um, when you're a little bit older, we'll discuss it more. But it's I think it's coming up much earlier than I had hoped it would. And, and so, like, I do want him to make his own choice about religion. But I really don't want to end up in a situation where I was with my sisters many years ago where they were both at this Bible-thumping, born-again youth church where they came home and told me, even though, you know, they love me to death, they would come home and tell me I'm going to die and go to hell because I don't go to church with them. And I really don't want that to happen between me and my that, kid. That's kind of an ex- I mean, an extreme, yeah, extreme version of any religion where you definitely have the extremists. But at least for me, I mean, I may not be, you know, 
especially when I go to school and they're all like, which church do you go to on Sunday? And I'm like, Pastor Pillow, <laughs> Sister Shades. I'm in my bed Sunday morning. Like, it's my one day to sleep. In. I'm going to tell you, my but... dad used to tell everybody, we go to the Church of the Holy Oval on Sunday mornings. Holy Oval. <laughs> However, NASCAR. I, I did, you know, I did want her to have um, her be able to kind of develop some beliefs and have something to help guide her and help with her morals. But I'm not, she's not in a situation where it's, absolutely extreme i mean if you if you start talking well, crap about jesus to her she's gonna and you know what you and one. christian <laughs> but now okay still, she doesn't push it is like what when, it is when i was growing yeah. up and i was going to catholic school i went to catholic mm-hmm. school for 12 years um it was all catholic children well right. now it's not as much about being in a christian school or a catholic That's school not. or a lutheran school people it's more open because people send their kids there even not in the faith because right. it's a good education. Right. That's exactly and it. Exactly. And it's non um, right. and hers is non denominational. Right. So and, it's not and, specific. And, and within the non denominational and I'll remember I was married to a pastor and we mm. were um uh, pastoring non denomination non denominational non denominational church. Discontinuing initiative. But, but you can go within the non denominational from the the I believe in God and, and we're good people to the people like you're going to burn in hell and you got to pay 10% of your tithe and I need to be in church three times a week, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. So you've got the range of everything and all of the parents that believe that. So I think schools like that have to adjust their teaching from where it used to be. Right. And they do. And, and there's, you know, she has friends that might be a little bit more on the Christian the extra, side, fire and brimstone, you know, the stronger side, right? But... And it, a lot of it has to do with the church they go to outside the school, right? right. But it's, a, I mean, it's okay. I like her to be able to have oh, some agree. beliefs and have, you know, have a solid understanding and a solid foundation and kind of, you know, right. Direction. And you know what? I so... when I when Rachel was growing up, it was always about. Um, I wanted her to be around a lot of diverse kind of people. Mm-hmm. You know, that's why you know I had rainbow friends. You know, and. And, you know, diff- friends from different um, religions and different right. backgrounds. And I always like Rainbow Family and learning all that different stuff. And I went, I mean, I personally, I attended an all-white high school. Mm-hmm. I did completely too. all. You, I had a friend flip through my through yearbook white... and he's like, there is nothing but white people white here. I went to an Catholic high oh. school. I did um, not. I went to public school. the city of Detroit, right. which was very right. interesting. But I mean, where, where my daughter's at, it's very diverse. Right. I've very been diverse. over there because I used to sell yeah. them advertising. Yeah. 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 It's a great school. It's yeah. nice. But, um, yeah. Yeah. I'm just worried. <laughs> worried because i don't i really i've been in that situation where i'm with family members who have a complete opposite belief that i do and and they condemn me to hell but for it what do you like, want your sons be able to develop what his own beliefs are and then i do but i i i also don't want him to swing to this extremist non-logical thinking think form of religion in some areas so wouldn't your son naturally I don't have areas he'd find a little bit. He's a little bit more extreme. I don't find myself to be an extremist in, in many areas. Uh, any, if if any. Well, okay, no. Aren't you? I, aren't you like a survivalist? I like am. A little bit more extreme. And a liberal. I am not a gun activist. I do believe that we should all have the right to own a gun. Okay. Um, I don't. Uh, I think that should be our choice to own a gun. I don't think we should have the choice taken away from us. Okay. Which but is what's have, happening. You have strong beliefs in certain areas. Like I absolutely firmly believe this. In regards to this, like you, you just, you have very yes, strong I, beliefs. Yes, I absolutely, firmly, 100% believe that the Higgs boson has been discovered. I don't even know what that is. You are such you a nerd. You know what, I was, I was just going to look at you and go, do you get it? The Higgs boson was just discovered last year and by through the scientific method. It's what they call the God particle. It's the particle that exists but doesn't exist but can exist when it wants to exist. Okay. It's a crazy piece of quantum physics mechanics. Okay, that's... so is this telling us like um, um, if we believe in God, we're right, on, we're, we're on? No. It's saying there's no God? No. Well, what's what's the big deal of discovering it then? Because it was theorized to be um, a particle that would exist and would be very difficult to find. But if you did A, B, C, and D at just the right times with the right equipment, you would find it. And they finally did it, and they found it, and they've been able to repeat it and but, but and prove it. But why did they call it the God particle? Because it is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. 
and that's that's what everyone says about God. He is everywhere and nowhere all at the same time. And so you're really confusing my spirituality right now. <laughs> it's just it's just <laughs> like I'm thinking you're confirming to me there's a God. No, yeah. it's just like saying somebody has a God complex. It's okay. just okay. using the term that so, it's so I think she was diverting your, your question. No, I do have very <laughs> strong beliefs. Um but I generally base them most often on fact and logical thinking and i don't have a problem with other religions i don't have a problem with jewish people or muslim people or christians or anyone else of any range of the denominations of faith and until they come to the point where they tell me without any proof that i am wrong right and and it's like See, you, you can't they were wrong in what they believe yeah, yeah it's like it's like i don't I don't negate your beliefs. I, I, I think that none of us know what is really true. Right. Because exactly. the only exactly. thing we have to go on is the word of another human being. We don't have any physical, logical proof. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, if Jesus walked through this door and healed my sicknesses, I would become a Jesusite like nobody's fucking business. But unfortunately, I've never seen a true miracle of Jesus happen. So I can't, uh, I can't say that this guy who wrote this book 12... 100 years ago because it was only 1200 years ago most of the time uh that it's true because you know i have no proof yeah we can take a break if you'd like we, we we've gone a whole hour without no break so you've been listening to the curvaceous bounty of sin city looks like we're all wound up on some topics tonight <laughs> please join us back we got a guest coming at 8 30 and then the beautiful becky butterfly at nine we'll be right back